So, I'm just going to share with you a story, you know, uh, a story of developing this uh, uh, equipment uh, with young engineering graduates. So, we know you're all using this, you know, in your day-to-day -day practice. And uh, we know how gold standard it is for both glaucoma and uh, neuro-ophthalmology. But if you see, it's, it's, it's been uh, decades since it was designed. And of course, it's quite bulky, non-portable. You can't take it from a place to place. Uh, if you want to do outreach or you want to put it up in mission centers, it's impossible. It's so expensive. And of course, every other day they say that trial set is gone, sir. This frame is gone. The machine is not working. You need to call uh, the Zeiss team or whoever supplies it for maintenance. And of course, you need somebody to stand over there and you know, walk through with the patients, all the steps. So it's an added manpower. And uh, there's always been people looking for alternative devices. People have tried uh, with tablets, iPads now. There are several publications on that. But this is what you see you know, in day-to-day -day practice, eh? post-lunch. <laughs> uh, 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 Dr. was saying that you know, who, uh, the better halves know who snored. But uh, I, I, I don't sleep after a lunch, even in a meeting, because the next neighbor also can find out. You, know? you can't sleep in a flight, you can't sleep in a train. <laughs> uh, so this is what happens. You know, this is not a dramatic picture. It was a real picture uh, taken by my good friend George some years back when Alan Robin asked for a picture like this. He said, he already had in it ar archives and he sent. And I, saved it for this. So this is what is the global VR market. If you're going to see, it's going to have a huge market. And if you're going to take healthcare and, and uh, also eye care, there's going to be a significant uh, uh, use of this in uh, diagnostic tool. And also a simulation and training and uh, wet lab based practice, all that VR is going to become uh, a great uh, tool. So if you see any, any tool, whatever be the back end, the front end has to be very simple for the person who is using. No, you see a beautiful screen here, right? But I would recommend of each one of you to just go back once and see what's happening. You know, behind this LED screen, then you know how difficult it is to put up a beautiful screen like this. There are several monitors and several people sleeping in the back. So the future, is there in healthcare, and that's what we also wanted to drive. And uh, I personally, being an Arvind for the last 24 years, I believe compassion drives innovation. Nothing else. No, you can, uh, people can be entrepreneurs, but somewhere there was a compassion to drive it. Otherwise, we'll just keep using whatever is available. And I saw two boys like this. They walked in when I was busy in glaucoma clinic at three o'clock in the afternoon full loaded patients, patients were all standing and these two boys walk in into my room and they ask for a permission. Now, uh, normally we don't give appointments to anybody, they just walk in. So he also walked in and he said, he wants to do something related to glaucoma, some work. I said, what are you doing? We are doing first year in VIT. Okay, first year students. Then I didn't know what to do because there was a big list of patients waiting. I didn't want to do, I just didn't want to say no to them. I can't meet you now, you come other, some other day. But somewhere in the back, I said, let, let me try something. I said, there is something called Humphrey Visual Fields. There are some patients waiting, a nurse is doing it. You go and just observe that and come back. And we'll talk at 6 o'clock. And they observed it uh, till 6 o'clock. And then they came back. Then they said, oh, there's such a big machine. Patients are waiting. No, they are asking them to see the central dot. And then the side, uh, uh, they're checking the side vision. Good. So what do you want to do here? He said, we want to do something, something innovative. I said, why don't you work on this? Why don't you make it simple? And that's how this started, only with the dialogue with them. And after that, absolutely, I would say the rest of the presentation is not in my hands, it's in their hands. Whatever they did, you know, all the credits to them, I have no financial interest in this. Then they came back a week later, a month later, a year later, with multiple versions. So they said, we are going to use virtual reality because of the two important things which uh, uh, the physics behind it. So a binocular test, you can simulate in one eye. So you can automatically occlude the other eye. So you don't have to occlude an eye when they are doing a virtual reality visual field. 
The other thing, the refraction doesn't matter. You don't have to correct the refraction. Plus 4 to minus 4 diopters, you can just use your VR, adjust the diopter there itself, and you can continue to do the test. And why VR was suitable? Because it's kind of, you're saving your cost, it's saving space. You don't need a trained staff to uh, monitor all these work. And also the ease to use it, because of the comfortable positioning to the patient. And no eye patch is needed, as I said before. And less distraction, because even in a visual field, you can be distracted by external things. Here you are inside your own world, there will be less distraction. And even you can do this in outreach or in vision centers, where there is more distraction elsewhere. So this is just a, a journey of that from the concept uh, in December 2015 when the boys came to meet me till what I'm talking now between June, July when we are doing a trials on this. So the journey has been very interesting for me. And as I said, the journey, I'm only part of the journey. Now I'm just guiding them and advising them or helping them, giving them space and patience to do some piloting. So that's the role for me so far. But this was the first one, where they had program, they came up with a software program, you know, which could uh, do a supra threshold testing. You know, similar to the points which a HFA would test, they did a program, they put it on a mobile phone, and they brought the device. But there were several issues like this. So there was no control over the device. You no, know, we, we can't know what the patient is seeing, what they are doing, nothing can be monitored. And fixation monitoring also was not there. And there were several optical aberrations which were giving us very poor results. And then uh, the idea of this thinking out of the box, you know, I again got from these smart boys you know, who, who are really thinking out of the box. And then they said, now we have an idea. We can use two mobile phones and solve some issues. You know, where the, through a Bluetooth, the other phone is seeing what is happening in that phone. So, by this, we were able to have a good control of doing the test and also fixation was being monitored on a blind spot. So they were putting the light on the blind spot to check whether the patient is fixating in the right way. And again, these issues were there related to optical aberrations, limited field of view and uh, distortion of images in the virtual reality uh, set up with a mobile phone inside. Then. Uh, we, we did some uh, trials with this prototype uh, in our hospital and also uh, we, we showed to several ophthalmologists in the All India meeting which was there this year, beginning of this year and we had a lot of feedbacks. In between we presented this as a movie in uh, GSI and it won the best of uh, show award also there. And then came the third idea or the third prototype which was in a cardboard box. Now they put a guest tracker also. They put another uh, raspy cam with a camera inside to see the eye and see whether he is fixating it. And also, there was a very good control after starting by the dual mobile phone technology. And fixation monitor was again done with the blind spot. Again, it became heavy now because of the unit inside. And it was quite uncomfortable to do, like what you're seeing there. It has to be placed on a table and uh, it was very uncomfortable. And the distortion was... Uh, images was not solved in this prototype also. Then they had a custom uh, hardware in their prototype 4, you know, where it, it is no more a, a separate VR. So they had custom design, it was 3D printed in our hospital. Uh, uh, we, uh, there was a, uh, the Arvind Eye Foundation was kind enough to give us a 3D printer seeing all the work which was happening. So we 3D printed this and again the gaze tracking camera which was inside made it heavy. So this was heavy. So we had to deal with that. And also the next level of uh, cloud computing was also happening to the uh, field. And uh, what you see now is the prototype 5 which we have, uh, which uh, the boys have smartly called a C3 field analyzer because it's compact, it's comfortable, and we have to prove whether it's cost effective. I said you can't say it's cost effective unless we prove that. But still, so they are smart enough to call it as compact, comfortable, and cost effective. So when you say compact, we are saying that the device is lightweight, easily portable. No, you can do multiple patients. No, you can have more than two or three units and do multiple patients at the same time. And can we 
conveniently used for lot of outreach work. Comfortable, you know, you don't have to put a patch on the other eye. You are uh, free to sit in a comfortable posture while performing the procedure. Wherever you want, you can sit, even in your easy chair and do. And there is a less chance for fatigue because you are being closely monitored with the dual mobile there. And uh, perimetry, you know, the cost of it, the, the, the Humphrey Field Analyzer is 15 lakh plus with all the added uh, uh, cost to it, which comes on with your uh, 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 package. And uh, again, there is an easy to use operator here. And also tele-ophthalmology and all purposes of telemedicine is also possible with the cloud computing. So just to show you the uh, difference between these two, again, uh, uh, the advantages of uh, the CFA over a HFA, it's basically the reputation, but uh, again, it's a kind of uh, 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 a thing which, is, which will be less expensive. We still don't know what is the cost. The boys have to figure out what is the cost. Now they are a startup now to uh, figure out the cost now. But it's a standalone equipment with these specifications. The background brightness of 31.5 apostles and it's been calibrated using a photometer. The stimulus size is Goldman 3. The stimulus presentation time is 200 milliseconds. All this has been calibrated. And uh, you can see, uh, you can uh, have a control on the fixation loss using blind spot and also false positive and false negatives. And uh, they test 54 points and twice these points are checked and it's a uniform intensity supra threshold test. So I'll just briefly show you the steps in the test. Uh, you, you have to prepare the patient like how you prefer for a HFA, you have to get briefly tell them what is this procedure about and then you can test uh, visual acuity on this. No, you can add on a lot of things if you want in the future. Maybe we can add on a contrast sensitivity test to it and a lot of things can be done, but this point you can test the vision of the patient exactly on the virtual reality and then you give him a demo of what he is actually, actually doing. No, so that he understands better, so that his performance is also better. And after the demo test, no, you have a, uh, uh, you can see the simulation of the headset and the best part is the other phone, you have a very good control of, you'll, you'll be seeing what he is doing, no, which point he is marking, no, where he is missing, and all that can be, you can see the points on the blind spot, whether he is responding to that. And that clearly shows that he is not uh, uh, fixating in the center. We can instruct him and correct him to do that. And then you start the main test, uh, which will take roughly three to four minutes, the whole test for an eye. And uh, finally, you generate a report. And uh, these are some of the reports uh, which you can see, uh, the comparable reports between an HFA and a C3F. Quite comparable reports you can generate. Uh, so the, if, if you are interested to know about the validation, we have, we have just completed this trial comparing HFA uh, and the C3 analyzer, roughly around 100 normal and 100 glaucomatous patients. We are, we are yet to analyze the results. The, risk, the study was just completed uh, the end of July and uh, we'll be having the results and we are trying to publish it by this end of this year. But this was the primary outcome to again to determine the sensitivity and specificity of this screening algorithm in comparison with the standard automated perimetry and to assess the correlation of visual field findings between CFA and the threshold may, uh, mode and HFA on a point by point basis. And secondly, we also want to see the time taken and also the comfort level. So we have interviewed the patients about the comfort level comparing these two and uh, there have been very positive uh, 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 secondary outcomes at this point of time because the time is less, we, we are obviously, we know the results and also the comfort level, everybody said, no, we are very comfortable in doing this than the Humphrey field as expected but the primary outcome we'll have to see. So this was the uh, methodology we followed and we are doing a, a data analysis on that. And this is the, some of the patients if you see on the machine, uh, on the field analyzer. The field analyzer is right outside. You are free to take a demo of it. Whenever you find time in between these meetings, you can take a demo. Uh, and you can also give your feedback so that this can be done better for a future use. Thank you.